Hello darkness, my old friend. You've come to talk with me again. Sends lose 7-2 to the Washington Capitals. <laughs> oh, the end of the season is gonna be wonderful for me. Oh yeah, buddy? What team do you cheer for? Whichever team wins the cup, I'm always happy. I hate you. So things aren't going well. Then the Sens scratch Duchesne Stone into Zingle. Then things go really bad. Then all three are traded and you think, all right, well now at least we can get back to hockey. And then last night happens. I will remember you. Will you remember me? Thanks for your time in Ottawa. Thank you for the memories. And right now, that's all we've got is the memories from Stone, Duchesne, and Dezingle's time in Ottawa. I can't wait for the future, but the present? Yeah, it's not so nice. The final 19 games of this season are going to be long. As always though, Let's kick things off with lineup changes. You might want to sit down for this one. It's going to take me a while. Knowing Ottawa's current position and where they're headed, the Sens sent Brown, Batherson, Chlapik, and Golubev back to Belleville following the game on Sunday against Calgary. Balsers was the healthy scratch, and if that continues, he should be going to Belleville with the rest of them. With those guys all out of the lineup, the Sens reinserted Cody Ceci and Mikhail Bodker to the lineup after being healthy scratches on Sunday. Adding to that list, Mark Borowiecki returned from injury, and Oscar Lindbergh made a Sens debut. And finally, after being acquired in a deal with Anaheim, Brian Gibbons made his Sens debut as well, after Gibbons was acquired in a trade that sent Pat Seeloff to Anaheim. Getting Gibbons and Lindbergh in those trades was huge, because it allowed the Sens to send down Brown and Batherson. Now let's keep them there. With the skater set, and the Sens electing go 11-7 and seven once again, Anders Nilsson was given the start and goal. And in the early going, these new lineups seem to actually work. The Sens' new look fourth line gets to work and starts cycling the puck. Finally, the puck lands on the stick of Gibbons. He goes cross ice back door to Lindbergh. He bangs it in the net and the Sens lead 1-0 less than four minutes in. And they have a goal already. They have as many goals in the first four minutes of this game as they had in the last three games combined. And then not even four minutes later, they do it again. Then with the Sens on the power play, CeCe feeds Duclair, he has lots of room, steps into one, rockets one by Holtby, and the Sens lead 2-0 just 7-10 into the first period. Oh Duclair! Let's see plenty more of that! You can keep that up? You're more than welcome to be in Ottawa long term. Seven minutes into the first period and it's already 2 nothing. This whole not having Stone to Shane and Dezingle thing might not be so bad after all. But of course, I spoke too soon. To send Singh Pajot has a breakaway, go off on a line change, he doesn't, and they get caught. Kuznetsov feeds Ovechkin, he feeds Tom Wilson who's wide open in front of the net, he taps it by Nilsson, and the Caps are down just 2-1. to one. Yep, that's more like it. I mean, at least in this case, it wasn't bad defense. It was just a poor line change. But something that Ottawa has done way too many times this season pops up once again. Not even a minute after the Caps pulled it within a goal, they score again and tie the game. Brady Kachuk gets knocked down in the neutral zone. There's no penalty on the play, and there probably should have been. Burakovsky picks it up, carries it into the send zone, feeds Orloff, he goes cross ice to Eller, he one times one by Nilsson, and we're tied at two. Once they got the puck in the send zone, it was too easy, but it should have never gotten in the zone. You're welcome, Washington. Fortunately, we get to the end of the period with the game still tied at two. After the way Ottawa started, it's not great that they're tied at two, but if you had have told me they'd be tied at two before the game started, I would have taken it. Plus, two goals. And speaking of two goals, TJ Oshie. After Ovechkin rings one off the post in the first minute, the Caps go to the power play. Backstrom feeds Carlson, he one times one by Nilsson, and the Caps lead 3-2. Then a few minutes later, DeMello's clearing attempt doesn't get out, Backstrom picks it up, he feeds Orpik, Orpik fires one on goal, Nilsson stops it, Oshie picks up the rebound, bangs it in the net, and the Caps lead 4-2. And Oshie has his first of two on the night. <sighs> Look, 
I know that icing the puck means you can't change, but I would much rather see you just get the puck and fire it all the way down the ice than try to go off the glass and give it to the Capitals. From now on, an icing is better than a turnover. And if they score on the ensuing faceoff, well, they would have scored on the turnover anyway. At least you gave yourself a second chance. And then, the Sens turn the puck over in their own zone again. Connolly picks it up at the blue line, wheels down the wing, fires the shot on goal, Nilsson stops it, Connolly picks up the rebound, puts it in, and the Caps lead 5-2. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. I know Tim Horton used to play hockey, and then he opened a donut shop, but we're talking hockey, so cut out the donuts! Then the Sens get caught on a bad line change, Oshi carries the puck up the ice, he feeds Verona, who feeds Orloff, who goes back to Oshi, he bangs it in the empty net, and it's 6-2. But this goal didn't come without a little controversy. With the Capitals buzzing the puck around the Sen Zone Globetrotter style, Nilsson starts flopping around, kicks the post off the net, and then the puck goes in. But it's the NHL. They don't like the Sens, so they give the Caps the goal anyway. Video clearly shows the net completely off its moorings when the puck goes in, but the referee goes, nah, the puck was going in the net before the net came off its moorings, so we have a good goal. I have two eyes, you have two eyes. We could all see the puck didn't go in the net before it came off its moorings, but the NHL lied and said it did anyway. It's a good thing it's 6-2, and it's a good thing the sentence games don't matter anymore, because otherwise, I'd be pissed. That spells the end of the night for Nilsson, as he gets pulled in favor of Anderson, who shuts the door for the remainder of the second period. And on the first shift of the third period, Ovechkin drops it for Kuznetsov, he skates in, fires one over the arm of Anderson, and it's 7-2. You know the Globetrotters play the Washington Generals tonight? The Washington Capitals are looking more like the Harlem Globetrotters than the Washington Generals. Thankfully, things don't get any worse, and the Capitals skate away with a 7-2 win. 7-2, huh? 7-2. Let's just get into good news, bad news. The Sens had an excellent start to the hockey game. And that is the good news. Two goals in the first seven minutes is more goals than they had in the last 180 minutes before that. But it wasn't just the goals. They were hard on the puck, they were tenacious, and they were smart. The Sens had the first eight shots of the period and had a 10-3 edge in shots just past the midway mark. The Capitals may not have been ready to play, but the Sens were. They came out flying, were firing on all cylinders, and were really good. And that is the good news. Now... For the bad news. The Sens gave up seven unanswered goals and that is the bad news. I don't care who you are or how good you are. I don't care who you're playing or how good they are. Anytime you give up seven unanswered goals, that's just unacceptable. Yeah, you have to give the Capitals a lot of credit for burying their chances, but they should have never been given that many opportunities. The Sens gave up way too many chances because of way too many mistakes. Which I guess is good news in the same sense because at least they didn't quit playing. Mistakes are correctable, quitting playing isn't. They turned the puck over way too many times. Two of the goals were a direct result of poor line changes, which should never happen especially in the first period. The Sens just weren't good enough defensively and gave up seven unanswered goals as a result. And that is the bad news. Next up, the Sens return home on Thursday evening for a matchup with the Edmonton Oilers. The contest will be the first of two meetings on the season between the two teams, with the Sens visiting Edmonton on March 23rd. The Sens come into the contest as the better team head-to-head -head of late, while losing 6-2 in their last matchup, but winning four straight before that. So far this season though, yeah, the Oilers have been a dumpster fire and have still been much better than the Sens. The Oilers currently sit 7th in the Western Conference wildcard race and are 8 points out of a playoff spot. They also sit 10 points ahead of the Sens with a game in hand. And the Oilers feature Connor McDavid, so that could be bad. Please keep him off the board. See you Thursday night.